Bonjour, a kikwe miniwa mayingan nindushnakas. Mayingan nindudem. Anishnabeg mishigama kichigamin ninjuba. Ninish kichijag. Hi, um, my name is Jess, but I am called Earth Woman and also Wolf. I'm of the Wolf Clan and I'm Anishnabe peoples of Michigan. I'm Ojibwe people of Michigan and the Great Lakes, and I am a two-spirit individual. For this talk, um, I really wanted to talk about our cultural beliefs and connection to the world around us, specifically to that of plants. So in our society today, in Western society, we have lost, I think, a lot of touch with our connection to the environment, to the world that is around us. And plants are really just a huge part of that. Now, growing up, you're taught about many of the sacred herbs um, and medicines that are used um, for ceremony. So for example, sweet grass, um, which I have here, is one of the most common plants that is um, used for medicine and for ceremony. And um, we're very familiar with sweetgrass braids, which, you know, we can can use for smudging or you might use them in other um, ceremonies. You might have them around your house for protection. Um, obviously, different tribes and different peoples use sweetgrass in different ways. But what we have an opportunity to do is reconnect with not only our relationship to this plant um, and our relationship to all plants, but how that plays into this world around us. As we know, the world is suffering from climate change. Um, temperatures are increasing. We have loss of habitat. Um, certain animals are becoming extinct or endangered as a result of the climate change. And we're noticing all sorts of weather changes all around the world, as well as impact even to our own lives and the temperatures that we're experiencing. So when we think about indigenous heritage and teachings and Native American teachings and community, we had historically this connection, this deep connection with these plants and they were used for more than just gardening and landscaping, they were used for medicine. So I actually want to talk about one of my favorite plants, which is known as comfrey. Um, and comfrey, I, I have a living plant outside, but this I have dried. And comfrey is a very broad leaf plant. Um, as you can see from one of the dried leaves, it's, it's pretty large. It's a pretty large leaf. And comfrey has incredible healing properties. It has been used by native peoples as... Um, as a means of healing for hundreds of years. Um, and it's one of, I would say, probably one of my all time favorites when it comes to what is in my medicine cabinet. So what I keep in my medicine cabinet, um, it does include, of course, things like aspirin, Tylenol, things that you might find in any, any standard medicine cabinet. But I also like to keep things that come from my connection to the land. So, in particular, um, I make a salve, which um, is a type of an ointment or a lotion, and I make this out of the comfrey leaves. So I have an entire process to get to this end product. But what's so great about comfrey is that comfrey is healing. So I can put this comfrey ointment on my skin, I can rub it in, and it gets rid of cuts and scrapes and bruises, and it restores um, your, your skin that's been injured, it restores your skin to a, a natural healed state in a really quick amount of time. So um, why or am I talking to you about comfort? You're probably wondering. <laughs> because ultimately, I think we have such an opportunity to reconnect with our traditions, with our traditional use of plants, to our traditional medicines that we have to the way that we integrate not only what we've learned you know, from school, but what we've learned from the world around us. 
and you can go outside and watch you know birds and bees and insects and you can watch pollination happen and you can look at plants and you can watch them grow maybe not in the second where you see the little leaves sprouting up but you can watch them progress and you can see how incredible it is the way that they grow and produce these things and you can see flowers bloom and realize wow this is really gorgeous but these plants have such a traditional use to them so i brought sweetgrass in in particular to really talk about how easy it is to to establish a connection so sweetgrass like its name really is a grass and this grows like a grass and what's really cool about grass is they they have a root structure underneath of the ground and that root structure is what allows more plants to grow. So they send out little roots and the roots shoot up and turn into more grass. And so really when you have something that's small, like a single plant, you can really expand that and turn that into, you know, a much larger opportunity for for you to harvest by, by allowing those plants, nurturing those plants and really establishing that connection. So what I wanted to hit and really express at this point is how we can not only learn about our community and our culture through plants, but we can learn about how we can improve our lives. And so there's a couple of books that I would like to highlight. So this one called Eat the Weeds um, really talks all about how the things that we see in our yards and in our gardens, how those things serve a purpose. So for example, um, one of my favorite weeds is dandelion. Um, most people know dandelion because when the flower finishes, it creates the little seeds and you blow the seeds and they scatter about. But most people also consider dandelion to be a weed. It's not something that they want in their garden. They consider it invasive um, and they don't want to have it. But dandelion actually has really cool medicinal properties. It cleanses out kidneys. Um, it really purifies blood. Um, in our natural landscape, if you live in an area that gets snow or has a winter time, dandelion is one of the first flowers to come out and is one of the first flowers to provide food for bees and other insects. Um, you can take dandelion root and you can uh, dry it and turn it into tea. You can actually eat dandelion leaves when they're very, very young. And while they do have a little bit of a bitter flavor, they're so good for cleansing out your blood and your kidneys. So eating weeds, I think, is a really important thing. And when we look back and we learn about native culture and we learn about the history of things, that's what our peoples did. They gathered wild crafted plants. They would go out into the environment and see what was around them and gather these plants and test these plants and see oh, what does it help to alleviate? Does it take away pain? Does it, um, you know, comfort the stomach? And so instead of, you know, instead of throwing away the dandelions or digging them up and, and putting them in the trash, you know, add some dandelions to your, to your salad or consider what plants might be around you, might be already in your garden, already in your neighborhood, and learn about the historical connection that these plants had to our peoples. The other book that I really want to talk about, which seems to be very popular these days, is Braiding Sweetgrass um, by Robin Wall Zimmer. And what she talks about is less focused on the botany, less focused on the plants themselves, but about our people and our connection to, to plants and to the earth. And what I find to be incredible in how Native peoples thought about the world and thought about the globe is that we didn't own the land. We were 
on the land, we were a part of the land, we integrated with the land, but we didn't own the land. And in not owning the land, we had an opportunity for a give and take relationship where the land provides for us um, by providing plants, by putting in an area for animals that we might hunt, um, but we also have the opportunity to give back to the land. We can um, cultivate certain things, we can protect certain plants, protect certain species, we can protect the sweet grass and make sure that it receives nutrients and water and, you know, and the attention and care that it deserves. And when we don't have that ownership relationship with it, we can have the give and, give and take. So what I think, what I think is so important about Native peoples, not just in the U United States or not just Native Americans, but Native, Indigenous Native peoples all across the globe is we have an untapped belief and connection to this earth in our culture. It's in our ceremonies. It's in the way that we think. Um, this is going to be upside down and backwards because I'm on camera, but um, we have the philosophies in the medicine wheel. We have these principles that we we've had for hundreds of years, but maybe we aren't connected to the same way because the world around us has changed so much. So if you're somebody that's like me that really loves plants, um, go out and do a survey. Like what do you have in your garden? What types of plants are around you that could be used for medicine? So to give some, some additional examples, um, Michigan, the state that I'm from, has willow almost everywhere. There's tons of willow trees. Well, willow is has a compound in its bark called solidic acid. And solidic acid relieves pain and is actually the primary ingredient in what you know as aspirin. So ultimately, aspirin, which is a huge product in the pharmacopoeia, in the, in the United States pharmacopoeia pharmacies, this product came as a result of indigenous knowledge about plants, but we have lost that knowledge over these hundreds of years as Western medicine has adopted and turned some of these things into pharmacy products. So I would encourage you to go out in your garden, take a survey, learn some of the plants. If you don't know what they are, um, you know, try and figure out, get a, get a book, use, Google, do a reverse image search, anything you can to, to learn about what's around you and learn about that plant's connection and the space that you're in. No matter what state you live in, there are always going to be what are known as native plants. Um, very much like ourselves, like Native Americans, these plants are were here. They were here in, in this continent in Northern America before the introduction of plants from Europe and, and other places. And these plants, these native plants, are super important for the ecosystem because they are meant to thrive in the space that you're in. So wherever you're located, go out into your yard, do a survey, learn about what plants you have, learn about the ones that you have that are native, learn about what other plants that you have that might be considered an invasive species or they might come from somewhere else in the world. But either way, learn about how these plants can relate to your life and your health because we can get so much medicine from the comfrey leaf that we didn't even know we could. All we had to do was, was pick it. <laughs> All we had to do was pick it and turn it into something and we end up with salve or we end up with uh, lip balm or we end up with oil for our hair. There's so many different uses for these things that you might not even think about if you just look. So Chamey Gwitch, big thanks. I hope my 
passion around plants was inspirational for you. And I encourage you to pick up either of these books, um, take a look or just take a look online. Obviously the internet's a big wide place and there's lots to be learned and see how you can reconnect with our traditional medicine, with our traditional medicine from plants. Even if it's just as simple as starting with a connection to sweetgrass, um, find, find that connection because there is so much joy to be had in this world, this natural world that lives around us and that are a part of us. So thanks. Bye.